Do you have a story to share with the world? Of course you do. We all have stories to share. An Anchor podcast allows you to share your interests in a way that connects to others all across the globe. If you have been considering starting your own podcast and don't know where to begin, Anchor makes it easy to record, edit, and publish with the click of a button. You can even add music. Whether it's crime dramas, self-improvement, paranormal adventures, or tips about parenting, you too can share your unique imprint on the world. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. You've got this. I believe in you. Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have a very special guest. I have Katie Hill with me, who is a systems integrator. Her handle on Instagram is your digital healer. And I actually, actually, Katie, I think found me, she found me through uh, one of my other guests. And she is doing some really amazing things to assist holistic healers with getting, uh, you know, their technology in place and some of the things that they can do to grow their business. So welcome, Katie, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited too. So let's dive into this. What is it that you're that you're doing? You know, let's let's actually start with your story because I love to hear how we've all gotten, you know, so far and where we've gotten to. So could you start a little bit off with your story and what led you into doing what you're doing? Yeah. Um, well, so I kind of feel like it's two streams that have kind of converged into one. Um, so I am the digital healer. So I've got this digital side to me, but I have also, um, healing has just been in my life for a while now. And I'm finally able to marry the two together, which is really exciting for me. Um, so I usually talk about those two streams. So the first is like digital. Um, I grew up in technology. So I kind of actually, now that I see a lot of kids growing up with iPhones, um, that was kind of me, but with <laughs> Commodore 64s and the really old Mac computers, yeah. um, I was the kid on the, on the keyboard and playing Oregon Trail and all those. I love um, that old. game. <laughs> yeah. I, love I need it to too. bring that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I grew up with the internet when AOL started. Um, I was in the chat rooms and um, then I just basically taught myself HTML and everything online. Um, and so all of my jobs, I, as I was kind of reflecting, I realized I've had a whole bunch of different types of jobs, but they've all kind of given me a little nugget of wisdom along the way. Um, as far as like how technology can be a good thing, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, it, it could be a lot of people can see it as, um, disconnected and bad, but I, that is one thing that I'm trying to, um, teach my clients at least is that there are some good things about technology. And so, um, one of my jobs out of college was actually working for a positive news magazine, which was really, really fun. It was called Ode. And, um, it was, they brought me on to build their community, their online community. And that was right when Facebook and Twitter was starting to become a thing. Oh, fun. And <laughs> it was really amazing to see how, um, how you could take a big community, like a global network of people. Um, and for, for our community specifically, we were talking about inspiring people and stories that were basically changing the world for the better. So like what better to like inspire people and then have them connect online. And so that was my job. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing what you can actually do with um, the internet. And so then I moved into a tech startup and I understood how like you grow software that way um, and design it and the good and bad of how to design um, software. And then I jumped into an agency, um, it's like digital marketing agency. And so I was a project manager and that's where I learned how uh, websites can really help you promote your brand um, and bring in the right clients and um, really share your message. And it's also where I learned more about structure too, and how structure is really um, important for things to flow. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to not be um, a process nerd and now I am. So I understand, <laughs> you know, you kind of have to have that structure in order to kind of play and create. Um, 
so then I, after that job, I took a job in, um, in healthcare. So I worked in a hospital setting. Um, I was actually in the admin. I was doing, um, I was building their website and that was really fascinating to me. And at that time, um, I had already been in like the holistic healthcare realm. And so this was kind of an open eye opener for me to step <laughs> into, um, more of the Western medicine and see how systems were built. So I learned a ton about systems um, and how, you know, right now it, it, there's a challenge within healthcare. And I feel like the systems really have grown a little too far. Um, things are a lot more siloed. And so that brought some ideas to mind of how I could help um, build something new. So that's my digital story. Um, I ended up quitting that job back in August and I am now doing my own business and I'll talk about that in a second. So rewind back to my health journey. Um, that started, um, the big stuff kind of started right when I graduated college and um, I had this like weird illness, like all these things started happening. Um, panic attacks, blood, high blood pressure, um, like skin rashes, just all of these things. And, um, I went to a number of doctors and no one was giving me answers. Like they kept pushing pills on me and then that would lead into another prescription, another prescription. And I just had this like deep knowing that that wasn't for me. I always wanted, like, I kept asking why, you know, what's the root cause? Why am I having these issues? Um, and wasn't getting the answers. So moved up to Portland where like there's holistic healers everywhere up here. So that was my first um, kind of introduction into, first it was naturopathy. So I had my first naturopathic appointment and that was amazing. Like I was blown away at um, the fact that I could I actually had a conversation with her for almost two and a half hours. So like I was going from doctor appointments that were 15 minutes and now like here's a person who was really actually interested in what I um, what was going on in my body, what my lifestyle was, what I was eating, just like we talked about everything. Which is how so, it should be, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So it was the first time I felt really seen um, and that I had an advocate too. You know, she was just, she was dead set on um, making sure that I felt better. And sure enough, like we did a couple of lab tests, found out I had Hashimoto, so I got an answer right away. And um, ever since then, I, that just kind of opened this whole array of healing modalities to me. So I got into nutrition, um, into herbs, then I got into acupuncture, and then that blossomed in, into like TRE and energy healing and spiritual work. <laughs> and that's when I started realizing that, you know, healing is not just about the physical system and body. It's also about energy and spiritual and like the traumatic stuff that you're holding holding on to. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that just kind of blossomed. And I was like, I want to help all of these people that have, you know, had such an impact on my life. And um, actually, it, uh, I got an idea on the acupuncture table, like right before COVID hit, um, I was like laying there, and I was like, Oh, my gosh, I feel amazing. You know, I want more people to feel this way. And I, I know a lot of people really don't know about all these modalities and my provider is amazing. She just knows exactly what I need. Um, and how can I like use my skills in digital um, to help these providers who like, you know, a lot of them were be, even before, before COVID, they were challenged with technology, but then wow insert COVID and um, you take away one-on-one -on -one sessions, people are like healers are having a hard time trying to navigate the online space. Um, it was just a really perfect timing for me to come in and say, hey, I can help. Um, and I want, you know, I actually really want you to succeed here. So that's how that came together. And so maybe for the last year, um, I've kind of been fumbling around trying to figure out what I could offer. And um, and that's where your digital healer came about. So I basically build um, the foundational systems for mission-driven healers to spread their message and prepare for growth. So um, I am working with a very specific type of healer who has these like really big visions of changing the healthcare paradigm, um, but they're kind of stuck in this like 
what do I do? I've got this big vision, but I don't really have the systems and I don't really know what to do. Um, so that's where I step in. I'll that's a fascinating story. And I'm sitting there thinking, I almost paralleled your story very similarly because yeah. Me too. I have a little bit of that software background as well as that healthcare background. And I do feel that we are put through those scenarios so we can see what's going on, you know, in them. And, uh, you know, for me, your experience is so needed in this area because we are on the precipice of change, you know, when it specifically when it comes with our healthcare system. And I was seeing this daily, you know, I was reviewing charts and I was recognizing that we couldn't merge charts within even the same healthcare systems. And it was so uh, like a cluster. It was such a cluster yeah. and it was not user friendly. And so, yeah. you know, I too, like you was beginning to go along the holistic path, even though I was working in conventional medicine, Mm -hmm. I was uh, learning about all of these different mo modalities and I was doing it for my own self because I too was struggling with a lot of pain and they were telling me it was fibromyalgia and they were, you know, just really not sure what was going on, you know, with me. And so that kind of guided me along the path of energy and understanding that working in this hospital setting, I was being bombarded every day with lots of energy from nuclear medicine to radio, you know, radiology, oh, yeah. all these things. Yeah. And yeah, so then I began to learn more about that. But with that said, I also started to try to, you know, take the experience that I had in healthcare and then apply it in a different way in a ho more holistic setting. So I think it's just natural that you and I attracted one another because mm -hmm. I do feel that there's, there, there are several of us out there who have the background and the experience to look at both sides of the picture and be able to kind of collaborate or meld them together. You know, what didn't work in the old system and how can we create a new system? So yeah. talk a little bit about what, what are you doing? What are you creating right now to be able to um, kind of pave a new path, you know, in this area of uh, new modalities and new ways of thinking when it comes to healthcare? Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting um, you say that because I've been trying to reflect too, um, because I do think that there's a connection there of when I was working in um, in, in the conventional system and um, the fact that things were so siloed and here I am working in holistic care and that's the basic uh, basis of what I'm building is the foundational systems and I want to make sure that they all talk to each other so I love that um, so right now the challenge with healers and just with anybody really growing a business online is that there are so many tools um, and it's hard to integrate them all it's hard to like create that best user experience um, and so reflecting on like the conventional side of things, I was in there and like when you're talking about your, the EHR system and having to do all the data and yeah. stuff, I was seeing it from a different point of view um, where there's this big, um, it's a big system with a lot of different departments and none of them are really talking to each other. And that's the challenge is that when systems grow so large like that, um, it's inevitable, you know, if you don't have the right processes in place, it just kind of spirals. And that's what was happening. So like, just as an example, um, I was put in charge of building their website and I couldn't for the life of me get a master list of locations, like the locations of <laughs> the you think is easy, right? <laughs> or like a master list of, um, of providers or even, you know, medical records were shared or not shared with others. And it's just, there's, um, there's a lot of stuff that I was starting to notice. And I, I am, I think that's one of my gifts is to see the larger picture and like a whole systems kind of picture thinker, which is why the holistic realm really inspires me is because you are actually looking at the whole. Um, totally. And, and so when I transfer that over to your digital healer and the foundation, foundational systems that I am building, it's, um, 
I always have that in the back of my head of how can we like build a very solid system for you and the process is in place so it doesn't get so large like um, like that example that I just showed shared and then also how can the systems flow easy mm -hmm. um, I'm all about ease I want this yes. to be super easy for both you and the customer so um, some of the things that I offer um like client management for example um that's one of i have five different systems um that i kind of deem as like what is needed for an online business for healers and one of them is client management and um and it, it really differs depending on what type of healer you are so if you're kind of more in the clinical setting um there are ehr systems where you can take medical notes and records uh -huh. um and so there's like all-in-one platforms that you can use um, that organize everything for you. So you can do your booking through that. You can do, take your notes through that. You can, um, it's just much more organized. And so that's both easier for you because you've got all your notes and everything um, in place, but it's also easier for the client because yeah. there's one place to go to. They're not having to log into multiple different things. So that's my whole wish out of this is just to make everything easy and smooth. I love that because I think one struggle that I had the most working in healthcare is there was no, it wasn't streamlined yeah. and I was struggling to find information, you know, for the patient or in real time, I worked in uh, organ and tissue donation. So oftentimes we would come on site and we'd have to really rely heavily on the nurses and the doctors to provide information for us. And not every time did we have access to the, uh, the, to the EMR. Right. And, but, but luckily, my my organ procurement organization worked under a hospital mm -hmm. so we did have access but it was kind of a joke because there were seven to 12 different hospitals under the same umbrella but none of them could communicate with one another right. and so yeah. I'm a big proponent of that as well uh, not only for the staff but for the the client or the patient too because when the patient would come to us and ask us questions and we we kind of looked you know, dumbfounded because we could pick up on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was so frustrating, not only for me, but for the staff and for the, for the patient as well. So I think, uh, you know, taking what we learned in healthcare and then applying it in a new way is so needed right now. And we, you know, we could be paving new paths, right? And this isn't always easy. It's like, we've got to take the big bushwhacker out there and, you know, create our own path, but absolutely, yeah. yeah, and it can be scary. But with that said, we, you know, it looks like you and me both have had a variety of jobs that have brought us uh, little tips and nuggets and tools, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to bring these pieces together. And like I'd shared with you before we started recording, when I first started the Soul Cafe, my, you know, the name of my, my business, uh, my whole intent was to have it be like a, a, a compository or a place for people to come to find a healer, to find a modality. But I didn't have nearly the amount of um, tech background that you do. I mean, I could make websites, I could do newsletters, I could do some funnels, I could do, you know, these types of things, yeah. but I didn't nearly have that. So you are so needed in this area. And I love that you are able to um, kind of cohesively bring, you know, all of your experience together to be able to now provide this service out into the world. And I will say, I have a lot of friends who are healers as well as some clients and their biggest struggle is tech. That's the mm -hmm. thing that they're, it holds them back. They get scared. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. And so if there's someone like you who can help guide them and move them through with ease and grace, they are a lot, they now have permission to do what they do best, which is was help and guide people, right? Where you can yeah. kind of take over the reins and do the technology aspect, which is really scary for some people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say there's, um, what I'm finding is there's usually like two big healer wounds just in general that, um, that I'm confronting and one is technology. And I've heard the same thing. It's like, um, when you get in there, like you, and even for anybody who is building a business, you usually have to bootstrap things um, at the beginning. And so you're trying to learn all these new tools, things don't work. It's a whole different language. 
And um, a couple of people have used the term like it's flooding their nervous system. Oh, yeah. And that, that's exactly what is happening. And, it and defeats the um, purpose. <laughs> I don't want that to happen because it is, yeah, it's so important to have a regulated nervous system to actually have that creation come about. And so that's what's happening is a lot of healers are just getting stuck. And, and that's what hurts me too, is because they have these great, you know, they're amazing at what they do. Um, and, and they have these visions too, and they just can't get past the technology. Um, and so that's one way that I am hoping to help is um, to provide assistance so I can basically take it off their plate, but also to show them that it can be easy. Um, that's one thing that I'm even recognizing too, is um, technology is, is so innovative. And so almost every year there's a new thing that comes out. And so it's much easier to build things now, um, even if you don't have like the, the background. Mm -hmm. So that was one. And then the second was like the, the money wound. Um, uh -huh. And that's one that I'm still working through too. But <laughs> um, I, that's with these foundational systems that I'm hoping to build for clients. Um, I want to also teach them that um, if you have these big visions for changing healthcare, um, that you kind of need the wealth background. You've got you've got to have those income streams, and so that's what I'm also helping to um, teach is that there are multiple ways that you can use the internet to to build those income streams. So you can then you know take your vision up and share it with more people. So um, that's what gets me really excited is both of those things that, you know, I can help with that. And that's why I called myself a digital healer too. I was <laughs> like, well, that feels a little weird because I'm not like really a healer, but I am in some. You are, aspects, you are uh, healing. Yeah, yeah. They're digital wounds, right? Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. And I think too, you know, it's like I started my business about six years ago when I took the leap out of healthcare and decided to start uh, this whole cafe. And what I think my biggest fear was, it was that how am I going to provide, you know, for myself because I was so used to having this um, steady paycheck coming in and, and benefits and, you know, all of this stuff. And so that was a huge leap for me. And I will add one other caveat on there to the tech and the money. I will also add the marketing to that aspect too, because- yeah. I think people as healers, we get, we get afraid. I don't want to market myself. I don't want to yep. seem selfish. I don't want to seem greedy, but you know, for me, it's really just standing in your authenticity and being genuine with it. You know, don't try, you know, people get so overworked about sales and, and whatnot, yeah. but when you are actually standing in your own power and, you know, genuinely sharing what you do, it, it yeah, it is sales technically, but with that said, People can feel that energy, you know, off Absolutely. of you and they can feel that passion behind yeah. it. And so me having that communications PR marketing background, I was really put to the test, you know, with that. So I can definitely, you know, feel, feel the energy around that. And these are some stumbling blocks that I'm recognizing, not only with my own journey, but with those who are stepping out onto their own path. And many people now are in jobs where they don't feel in alignment anymore. Mm -hmm. And they are seeing systems crumbling and they are seeing systems that just, it's like round, uh, you know, peg square hole or square hole, round peg, or whatever, you know? yep. <laughs> round peg, square hole. But yeah, they're like, this isn't working, but how do I take the leap? How do I jump out there? How do I support myself? How do I support my family and trust that what I'm doing is actually in my best interest? And I think that's a huge um, uh, block or barrier for people. And I do work with a lot of clients on that, you know, having that, uh, that abundance block there of, or that confidence block of just having yeah. the self-worth. And yeah, so there's so many components, you know, to this, to starting yeah. your own business and to stepping out, especially in an area that's very new for yeah. people. So many people in society have been programmed to think that conventional medicine is the end all be all. And that's the only way to heal. But um, I think we all kind of learn through our own personal journeys that there's more out there. Mm -hmm. And now we want to be able to share that, you know, with other people, but how do we do that? How do we put ourselves out there? How do we connect the internet, you know, online is the way to do it now. I mean, I, I have clients from all over the world and I would not be able to do that if I didn't have 
the access of being online. And like you said, there's kind of a negative stigma around artificial intelligence and technology and whatnot, but, you know, let's create a new energy, you know, around that and let's allow ourselves to be able to connect in a much more free flowing way. And the, there's no limits. There's absolutely no limits to that. Yeah. I mean, look how much the internet has grown, you know, yeah. <laughs> since, yeah. it, since it came out. <laughs> yeah. I would say too, um, you know, with a one-on-one -on -one model, I feel like that's changing a little bit um, because uh, one, because of COVID, you know, that gave us a chance to get online and understand how um, we can use it. And it, it floors me how many healing modalities you can actually do online. Like, I just totally, especially in energy. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I can feel this. <laughs> how, how is that working? Um, and, and so I definitely think there are a lot of um, ways that you can use the internet that a lot of people don't really, um, you know, there's more workshops, there's classes. Um, but also with like one-on-one, -on -one, I've heard a lot of healers are trying to move away from that. So there yeah. is that, I always question that too. It's like, yes, connection in person is always going to be the best. And I think there are ways to do that. But I think if we can do like a hybrid model of sorts. And so kind of what I've been teaching my clients is um, to try and move away from the one-on-one -on -one, um, model because that can be super overwhelming. And a lot of times um, you're kind of underpaid because you can't fit in more people mm -hmm. into a certain time block. And um, what I had been hearing from a lot of people too is that they seem to repeat themselves a lot in these sessions. And yeah. so they're using those sessions as um, education and um, just overall process kind yeah. of review and they hardly have any time to actually heal the patient and so um the the benefit of using online systems specifically in like courses um i i love the idea of taking like everything that's in your brain and moving it into a course so you can start like um introducing yourself through that way so you kind of grow your audience that way they get more educated on um, what it is you're talking about, what the processes are, and then um, and then you can funnel them into a one-on-one -on -one kind of situation. Or you could build a community. And so group healing is another really yeah. interesting thing. So moving mm -hmm. people online, I was also part of an energy group healing thing, which is amazing because I think that there is something to be said about community health, like actual community health of people coming together, talking about their symptoms, talking about um, their trauma, you know. Yeah. I do feel like there's some really cool things that can happen that way and technology can help with that. So um, I'm excited about where it's going. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be part of that foundational piece. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I'm definitely resonating with that. I've been doing one-on-one -on -one sessions for a while now and it does burn me out quite a bit. Yeah. And so I've been starting to think of, you know, what are some new ways that I can reach more people and expend less energy, you know, yeah. on my end? And I, I am feeling that as well with a lot of my friends who are working in uh, holistic medicine or health in, in this uh, natural healing modalities, they are feeling the same. It's like we're being guided to, um, you know, yes, we can work pe with people one-on-one, -on -one, but that's not our, you know, our whole day, you know, that we're doing that. And so what yeah. I love about the idea of courses or workshops is you could be sleeping and people are signing up, you know, all over the world. Yeah for those yeah. programs. And so I do feel that that's an area that I am more leaning towards right now because it is uh just it's just really difficult for me to be able to maintain these one-on-one -on -one sessions when I want to branch out. I want to you know, I want to do my podcast, I want to do my my YouTube, I want to write books, I want to do these things and it's yep. making it yeah, harder for me to, uh, you know, do that when I'm having these one-on-ones. Now, with that said, I love the connection. I do. I love having that connection one-on-one -on -one with people. But, uh, you know, I know there's more for me out there. And I know there's other people who are watching this or listening mm -hmm. that are like, me too, me too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I would say the connection piece is, um, is one I've been thinking about too. 
too. And I still think that you can have connection in those courses. You're still the one who is creating the content. You can also do hybrid things where maybe you pop in once a month or something and you're on Zoom. Um, I also know people who then take it off into like a retreat center. So maybe you do a couple of courses and the people who are really interested, you can then come together and meet in person. So I do feel like there's still some ways of doing that. Um, and I would also say like, Automation is another thing that I've kind of been grappling with because I know the benefits of it um, and the fact that, um, you know, it can streamline a lot of things and it can make a lot of processes a lot quicker, but there's also that like weird, icky AI feeling yes. to it. Yes. And I think that's, it's really just overcoming the stigma, you know, of that and, you know, utilizing technology in a way that's positive and is efficient and is a way that we can move forward, you know, to help heal and to help um, create a better, a better world, you know, and I think just learning how to do that and uh, collaborating with people like you, you know, to be able to do that, I think is fantastic. So Katie, you have started to create a website called myfavoritefavoritehealer.com. Favorite Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So going back to my story about the healing and I was on the acupuncture table, that's actually when I got this idea. I kind of dropped in and I was like, oh, I guess I better do something about it. Um, and that's where I really wanted to, um, I want people to find um, and I realized that it was hard to do that. So all of my healers that I know, um, I have gotten through word of mouth. And then there's a lot of like that trial and error. I'll go to intro sessions and sometimes I'll hit it off. Sometimes I won't. Um, there's another path too. You can go down insurance networks and now a whole bunch of healers just <laughs> yeah. aren't, aren't dealing with that. And so the, your options are really slim. Um, and so I was like, oh, well, let's see if I can make a directory. And that's where I originally started. And for the last two years, I've been building, I've got a whole book journal full of notes. Um, and uh, I realized I had to do some healing too first to get this to like actually yeah. come out of me. So um, over the last couple of weeks, I have finally pushed it forward. And um, I have the first version of it, which is um, called My Favorite Healer. And um, I'm focusing more on positive reviews. So really, I, I love the idea of word of mouth and having your healers really vetted by your community. Mm -hmm. And so you can basically go on there. And if you have a favorite healer, you can go on there and submit your favorite reviews. So we're looking at um, any type of stories where the healer has made a positive impact on you or a transformational change. Um, so we really want to know like deep down um, why do you like this healer? And the idea then is for people to go on there and search um, for healers and hopefully this will grow organically. And so you can kind of think of it as a positive review Yelp for healers. I love that idea because, you know, when you play that into the law of attraction, right, the more that positive energy that you put out there, the more that you will attract. And so I love that idea. I think that's wonderful because there's not a lot of sites out there right now that have that specifically for this niche that, you know, that we're talking about. So I think that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and eventually I think I do want to build it out. I want to bring in a community and potentially a marketplace. As I was mentioning, like a lot of healers do have these on like workshops and courses, but there's no real way to find them. So hopefully I can build that in at some point as well. But I'm excited to like try it out. It's kind of an experiment. It is. That's really exciting. So is there anything else that you'd like to share that you might be working on or some ideas that you have coming down the pike that you want to share with anybody? Um, I did want to put out an offer. So for my digital healer um, business, the foundational systems, um, I do really quick little website reviews. So if anybody is interested, you go, you can go to um, yourdigitalhealer.com slash resources, and I'll do a little website review. So if you feel like maybe your website's not working or um, it's not attracting the right people. I can usually find like one to two things that um, that you can you can actually change pretty easily on your end. So I would love to offer that to your audience as well. 
That's a great idea. And also, Katie, too, I know you don't create websites, but it, there's a lot of people out there that don't have websites. So can they reach out to you? To you, Do you have any suggestions that of people that you can send them to to help yes. them? Because I know that's a stumbling block as well. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, I can help. There are definitely websites that I can build. There's like one pager websites that are really simple. So if you just need to get something up there, which I recommend to anyone, just make sure you have an online presence. Um, definitely reach out. Um, I am also building my network. So when you build a business, you realize you are going to need some help. And I do want to encourage everybody to start thinking about delegating things because you can't do it all yourself. Yes. Um, and so I, I have a big network of friends who are social media managers, who build websites, um, who do all of the things. So I'm happy to be that resource. That's amazing. I love that. I call myself the quantum connector often because I just seem yeah. to connect people really well. And Same. I love that. I yeah. love that because, you know, it's almost like when I started to think about doing a retreat, it was before COVID and then COVID kind of shut it all down, but I'm probably going to start, you know, thinking about that shortly. But I started to have all these healers come to me and it was like all these speakers that I'm like, I, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? Yeah. So I'm like everybody was showing up, but I just didn't have the event, you know, in place. And uh, so it's kind of funny that you know, we do, we need to network, we need to create that. And sometimes there's people like you and I, who people can come to, and we may not be able to help them specifically, but we may have someone in mind who can. So yeah. I love that. Yes. Yeah. So if there's any of you out there who are struggling with starting a website, reach out to Katie. If she can't help you, she's going to guide you in the right direction. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm here to support you. That's that's my main goal. I want you to to be successful in what you're doing and to spread your message and get more clients and heal more people. I love that. So yeah. Katie, how can people reach out to you? What are the best ways for people to connect with you? Um, definitely my website. So you're digitalhealer.com and I'm also on Instagram, um, same handle and yeah, reach out definitely through DMs or email. Great. Well, thank you, Katie. I appreciate you coming on the show. I think this was a very informative and enlightening conversation, especially since we are moving into these new uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of growing. And, uh, uh, you know, we're kind of, um, you know, looking at old paradigms and, and old ways of doing things. They just aren't working and fitting, you know, into our new, you know, advanced ways of living. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it as well. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.